Hey folks, Phil Zito here, and welcome to day 15 of the Building Automation Bootcamp. And in today's video, we are going to talk through the topic of user roles, user rights, user access, user priorities, whatever you want to call it. It's going to be different depending on the building automation system you're working with, but the capabilities are pretty much going to remain the same. So in this system, uh, what we have is we have user accounts which we can log in as a user and then that user account is granted access and that access then allows us to view different points allows us to do different things and so when you're sitting there uh this is for a lot of owner operators and also a lot of new technicians and just experienced technicians as well uh when you're sitting there thinking about what can you do that would make a really beneficial impact to the end user and just would have a good impact on the operation of the building automation system, setting up proper user rights, setting up proper point access is really top of the list. Because you can have trends, alarms, programming, graphics, all that stuff that we've went through so far set up right. But all it takes is, you know, one unexperienced person who really should not be accessing something, going and changing K factors on boxes or tuning factors on PID loops because they don't understand what they're doing. All right, so let's dive in just kind of what all this stuff looks like. So if we go here, config, and we go under services, and we open up the user service, we're gonna see we have several different users in here. And if we look at a user account, we can see that they have a lot of different capabilities. Now, one of the really important things from a cybersecurity perspective is that each person has their own account. One of the worst things you can do is to do what I'm doing right here, which is having a building operator account that everyone uses. This provides very limited auditing capabilities, and auditing is where you basically log what the role or the user is doing. Um, and so you can see if people log in, and then you're like, oh my gosh, this person went and changed all these set points. But which person was it? If everyone's using the same account, then you have an issue. Also, if someone leaves the company, you have an issue because now that person who left may still have access. Historically, I've seen companies not really change their user profiles and their passwords. Another thing is not having expirations on the user account, not having strong password requirements, not enforcing logout times. Uh, not enforcing automatic logout. These are all things from a cybersecurity perspective that are really important. Now, once you have all this set up, I'm not going to go into nav files because that's kind of unique to the software. But once you have roles set up, right, now you can go and you can actually look at these roles and or accounts and you can can look at them and say, okay, now, what am I going to give access to? Now, this particular software allows you to go and dive in and you can have read access, you can have write access, you can have different types of access to different things. And it's really important that we set this up. It's a pain in the butt, I'll admit, to go and set up user access. But if you do it up front, and you use things like templates or copy and paste on some software, you should be able to kind of make this not really automated, but you should be able to make it much easier for you to set up user access, for you to set up generic accounts, and generic rights. The important part of doing this though is by going and making sure that only certain things are exposed to certain people then what that's going to do is that is going to make sure that, hey, if someone tries to go and change the ramp rate on something or the PID settings on something, you know, if I expand PID, if I w wanted to be able to override that or change the settings, but if I didn't have access to that point, then I wouldn't be able to do that. So by going and doing that, you can kind of see I changed that right here. By going and changing these things, that's going to affect kind of who has access to what. And that's really important. I really hope you're grasping that here because 
so far, right, we talked about the importance of setting up unique users for everyone. Now, fortunately, you can integrate with a customer's Active Directory so that they can use the same user account, not with every building automation system, but with most, you can interface with their Active Directory, use the same user accounts that they use to log into their daily work. And so that's nice. And if you don't have that capability, then you should really set up a user for each user using unique passwords, forcing password policies, as I said. Once all that's done, then we set up our categories or our permissions. For some folks, it's going to look like this screen. If you're using Niagara, for others, you're going to have where you actually set it on the individual points and you pick categories. There's a variety of different ways of setting it up. The important point is that you actually set it up. The next thing I want to talk about is, so we talked about users, we talked about user rights, I want to talk about backups. And backups are really going to be pretty important because what happens is that if you don't have a backup policy, if you don't have a policy for backing up your systems and you don't have a process for doing that, then what's going to happen is over and this can happen over a period of months or over a period of years you are going to change from the as built system to this kind of frankenstein system where people are making changes but no one has record of these changes cuz i can guarantee if you don't have a backup process then you probably don't have a submittal and as built updating process either so this is really important for contractors to communicate this to their customers and provide this as a service, ideally, where they update the submittal or as-built drawings and they perform regular backups. This is actually a valuable service. Um, now, for owners, if you have the technical capabilities in Acuum, you can definitely do this yourself. And I encourage you to do it. Make sure you're doing backups because backups, especially for a lot of us right now, who um, if you haven't already shut down your building and you're looking at going to shut down your building, it's really important that you perform a backup because some of your points are not going to be persistent. You know, if we open up this uh, Distech software here and I go to a, let me, let me add one here, do, 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 internal variable. And I click on this and you'll see persist. That means when the controller resets, the value in here is going to persist. Well, there's some software where there is not persistent um, programming. The values are not persistent. And so you really want to back them up because a lot of you are going to be turning off your buildings. You're going to go to turn back on your buildings and you're going to realize that all the settings have changed and things are just going to be bad. So make sure that you're performing backups. Make sure that that becomes a regular process. Make sure that you're setting up unique user accounts. Make sure that you are getting granular on the access associated with these user accounts. These are all very helpful things from a operator perspective as well as from a contractor perspective that you can implement that will provide immediate benefit. And the best thing about what I just showed you right here is a lot of this can be set up remotely. So the backup process can be set up remotely. You can perform remote backups. For, so for contractors who are looking to provide value to their customers right now, that is something you can definitely provide. So I hope this video was helpful to you. And I believe next week we're going to start looking at the IT setup of systems. So definitely, if you have any questions, reach out in the comment section. Would love to answer your questions. And I hope you all have a great day. Take care.